Oh, welcome in. This is your odds checker betting preview for this week's WM Phoenix Open. I'm Rick Gaiman. That right there, Jeff Feinberg. And Jeff, here we go. Big, big sporting week we have on our hands here, my friends. Yeah, uh, super excited. Obviously, the Super Bowl for guys like me, Rick, who you know are a fan of a team that never wins. The Super Bowl is just kind of a nuisance that I just want to be over with so we can get <laughs> on to the next calendar year of football but i say that i always do very much look forward um to the day and and all that it brings i don't think i've ever heard anyone describe the super bowl as a nuisance but i i do like that <laughs> no, i like that angle of it <laughs> yeah that could be used against me i just mean like i don't know uh, there yeah i said it i guess i just want the calendar year to start like super bowl could have been last sunday I just want the NFL to get going again instead of this cherry on top that is the end of the season. Obviously, you're a Rams, you're a Bengals fan, you got some big future. The game takes a different connotation. But to everyone else, yeah, it's more like I enjoy the party, not the game. I guess right. I should have said that. Yeah, I'm I'm in it for the the, the pizza and wings as opposed yeah. to the actual football for and losing yeah. props. Yeah, exactly right. Well, we'll see if we can find some winners this week. WM Phoenix Open, uh, TPC Scottsdale. We're done with the course rotations, and Jeff, we've got ourselves a pretty solid field. 18 of the top 30 players in the world, a couple of uh, the top five guys. So it it, it should be pretty star packed. This is the time of year where we start to see these guys uh, play much more often as we get into the meat of the schedule. Yeah, super excited. Obviously, Riviera next week, and then we're kind of off into Florida. Some WGCs, the players, uh, full swing. It's weird to say, like, because I even caught myself saying this feels like the start of golf season. It's weird to say that, though, having had Tory Pines a couple weeks ago. But I don't know. As long as we still got the three-course Pro-Ams, it feels like we're in um, – some, so as long as we're through those, it kind of feels like we're fully on our way. And, and we'll say that the field is great. Always a ton of fun. For whatever reason, the event that would probably least want a playoff in the history of golf yes. because it leads into the Super Bowl, they probably beg for it, has the highest playoff probability uh, uh, than most. So very weird factor. And, and I'm here for all of it. Yeah, it is amazing that this thing always seems to go to a playoff on Super Bowl Sunday. John Rahm back in the field and back on the top of the betting board. Seven and a half to one at FanDuel and Caesars. Pretty sizable gap down to Justin Thomas and Victor Hovland at 14 to one. And then you can get Hideki at 16, Patrick Cantlay at 16, Jordan Spieth at 16 or 18 to one, depending on where you are shopping. Those are the guys that are shorter then 20 to one, Jeff, are we going to step to any of them for this week? It seems like there is more momentum than I normally see for people claiming that they'll just sort of use the whole clip on John Rom. Mm. And while in theory, it feels like, you know, we've had Swaff Daddy and List and Hoagie. So at some point, something's got to give here with the real top of the board. But as we start every show, I'm tempted. I think <laughs> about it for a brief moment. But in the end, I have too much fun trying to build a card and trying to chase the John Rom win. Or not trying to chase it would be, ex wow. Trying to call the John Rom win. I don't really want to get into that business. I just want to accept it when it happens, kind of. Yeah, I'll be thrilled with him when he wins. I will probably not have an outright ticket when it happens, but I'll be thrilled for him. I'll be very excited. He's owed a couple from the golf gods, but it, it, won't, it won't be lining my pockets. Is the way yeah, certainly. <laughs> yeah. So moving down, Thomas always an enticing. Hideki used to be like the Hideki versus Ricky battles here. Yeah. Now Hideki's sort of the one left standing, still near the top as his game uh, as continues to ascend, you could say. Um, but for me, Rick, I I'm skipping all of it. And it's the, uh, I don't know, at the moment, the one I'm most intrigued to are sort of uh, – the 20s, 22 to ones that you're starting to see, but 365, I think, as a 22 on Xander Shoffley, as like, you know, so people can bet winners. That's the one that is kind of calling me, but I, I haven't made a trigger yet. Xander's there. Brooks Kepgar, defending champion, is there. Daniel Berger, 28 or 31 to 1. FanDuel's got a 31 on Berger, I guess, because of the WD last week. Some question marks there. And then Scotty Scheffler generally rounding out that 20 
to one or so range, Jeff. So is this is this the best place to start the card? A lot of intriguing names here. If we can get some good status on Berger, he's a guy yeah. could be interested in. I know, uh, you know, a bit of relief. Uh, we're starting to see maybe what a Sam Burns number comes back to. I don't mind that one one bit at 35 to 1. And I go to bed last night. I record with Pat in the morning. And like a lot of people, it seemed like there's a lot of love for Scotty Scheffler. I really like Scotty Scheffler this week, Rick. I haven't made the bet yet. I don't want to bet on a guy that seems to be – on a guy who's never win, won who's going right. to be very popular. That's like a recipe that's a disaster. I mean, we saw that with Finau forever. You finally get the win when it's like people – don't when you're not a consensus pick. So I love Scheffler, but I'm nervous because him as a consensus love loved pick by people is a dangerous place for a never winner. I uh, completely agree with you. I'm super intrigued by the burger number and the status for him this week. Sam Burns getting to a length that I like. Bubba Watson's 41 to one, Jeff, as we enter the 40s. He finished runner-up to Harold Varner III in Saudi Arabia last week. Are you concerned at all about those guys coming back and having to tee it up right away? I'm not entirely sure. I haven't made a full decision on that. I mean, I've mentioned how much I like Xander, and he was over there, so that is definitely a factor. I believe they were given an exquisite charter home, yeah, just like they're not, of Phoenix. They're just not like sitting they coach. Were, but. Yeah, <laughs> they're not even sitting. Yeah, they're sitting in something real special. To get those guys there, they were probably promised a, a beautiful flight right into Phoenix. Um, so I'm not – it's not an element that's having me cross guys off. Like a lot of people, you start to see those signs of life from Bubba. It's easy to get excited. Phoenix is a place where – feels like he's won it twice like so many great phoenix players he's actually never won it uh, it's where a lot of golf cards started you know five six years ago when talking about phoenix i could see it we got riviera next week and we'll be, i'll be making a lot of conclusions as to what sort of season i'm expecting from baba usually that, that's easy to do when you see how he handles his comfort zone in in phoenix and riviera but uh, tempted a lot of people have, I saw this morning, make the auto Bubba Brooks bets. I haven't run to make either of those. Yeah, fair enough. Litmus test for the next couple of weeks for Bubba Watson. You start to get some larger discrepancies when you get to Webb Simpson coming off of a, a down year where he did not earn a top three finish for the first time in a decade. He can He's 34 to 1 some places. If you shop it on the odds checker grid, you can get it at 45 to 1. So we're starting to see some discrepancies down here, Jeff. And this is kind of where we enter... Um, you know that second tier of names that we've been that have been much shorter uh, for the last couple of months. Now with an injection of great players, Corey Connors is fifty to one. Russell Henley, Adam Scott, fifty to one. Billy Horschel, sixty to one. Are any of these worth a nibble? Okay, so history, or at least recent history, tells us tread lightly, not to go too far. Granted, you know we saw we would have said that at Torrey Pines and Lucas pops at eighty. But, you know, you mentioned the field strength. And I would say, you know, it's almost as Pebble Beach has lost in prominence in the PGA and what it means to win Pebble Beach, this event, even with the party, um, has really ascended, maybe more so than any event yeah. in the last decade. And even winning it, what it's worth, you know, when evaluating a resume, it carries a lot of weight. And I don't know how far I want to go down this board. But you mentioned Webb. It's a hard guy to ignore here. Bad form. Tony Finau. Back to Finau, 40 to 1, Rick. Just stare at the numbers. And it's like that consistency that you depend on to get you to Sunday and hope for, you know, Finau magic that we got at Northern Trust. You'd be struck. Like, it looks like a big ask, right, at this point with Finau? Yeah. Yes, I agree. And I'm, I'm more bullish on Webb than most, but I, I, Finau, I will take a more cautious line. You're right. A lot of his contentions were be solid, be consistent, get yourself there on Sunday and hope that the chips fall in your favor. Exactly. And for a lot of times they didn't. And, and now if you're not putting yourself in that position, it's really hard for the chips to fall in your favor when you're T32 on Sunday. Yeah, and you just look at the stats and you compare it to where we got such consistent Finau play. It doesn't seem to be there. Louis Eusthazen on a course that I think fits him perfectly. Yeah. And he can have that steady, 
you know, we've seen guys be hyper aggressive and win here, like your Brooks Kepkas and, you know, that all or nothing approach, which you love in outright betting. But you can also play this with strategy. We've seen Webb be so great here. He doesn't overpower anything. But as we play this game, you almost got to find guys you don't or reasons not to bet a guy. Louis making his first worldwide start in a field this strong. And I believe I was told today six months. I just can't do it. The guy hasn't started in six months, four months. He doesn't win a ton, at least on the PGA to begin with. I love him, but I, I love, I think, the setup for him and the odd. But I guess there's a reason, and I can't pull that trigger. I might. I think I might. Uh, yeah, so the last time we saw him was the RSM Classic. He withdrew after, I believe, one round. So it's Talk not me like... into it. Talk <laughs> me into it. I just think that um, Louis' advanced metrics, like if you go last 50 rounds, he's like the third or fourth best player in this field. Now, those 50 rounds are spread out over a long period of time because of exactly what you mentioned, Jeff. We haven't seen him since the RSM Classic anywhere in the world. Probably the biggest layoff. But yeah, this is a good spot for him. He's played here twice. He's got two top 11 fifth finishes it's just um you know if he can get kind of dialed in with those wedges he'll start rolling putts I, I think he can be dangerous uh, or at least more dangerous than this number implies him to be yeah no and I, I guess I made the case and then I sort of talked myself off it as I'm looking for reasons that guys mm -hmm. to bet but okay I'm gonna like try to take out that red ink because I obviously made that case of how much I think it works for Louis a bet I have made Rick uh, 55 to one. And I think it'll even show up higher on a full, uh, odds checker grid. Adam Scott can't resist it. I know there's no course history here. We've seen guys win here without any course history. Um, so that's not an overall like big concern. Two top tens in the middle East recently. Desert golf, two desert golf courses in the middle East, Jeff. Yeah, so this is a guy that I like. If you look at the past winners and the guys that continue to play well here, they're really total package players. Brooks, Hideki, Webb, like when he's playing well. Ricky Fowler at the time of his success here was a real total package, complete, you know, obviously had strengths, but really lacked weakness players. And honestly, that's why I love Louis so much for this week. But Adam Scott, much of the same vibes, or reasons, you know, I like a lot of the players I like this week, like a Scotty Scheffler in some respects. Uh, I know Scott is weak with the putter. We've seen weaker putters win here. Noted Hideki's success when he wasn't the player he is um, today. And even Brooks can be a guy that struggles, has no problems here. So Adam Scott is a guy in this range I like a lot. Yeah, I will I will warm significantly on Scott as the week goes on, I think is generally the way that this goes for me. I've bet uh Taylor Gooch 66 to 1. I think he's just kind of mispriced. He's had one bad start in six months and everybody forgot about him. Played well at the farmers last time we saw him. And this is kind of a second shot course, Jeff. But I'm getting I'm getting to the 70s. I'm getting to the 80s and the 90s. Should I should I stop? What am I what am I looking at here? Yeah, just the way that I have sort of looked at it. I don't know that I'm gonna have a ton here. Um, you know, we've seen Connor's number crater for obvious reasons, I think, today. And Taylor Gooch, maybe for some of the same reasons, isn't getting I'm not saying you know he's Corey Connors, but um he is being forgotten. You sort of mentioned that he's being forgotten. It does sort of feel like just from two, three weeks ago, Taylor Gooch is completely out of sight, out of mind for whatever reason. So I don't mind that at all, Rick. But yeah, you're going to have to go farther. You're going to have to flirt with the hundreds for me to find guys that I'm going um, to bet on. We've seen course history be paramount here. Guys that played well here seem to have a great chance of winning here again. can only hope that means good things for Ricky Fowler. I'm not making the move, but... Going farther back, it's Aaron Wise at 100. Yeah. Uh, Gary Woodland, you know, at 100. Uh, Mito Pereira, 140. I'm trying to find you on the grid here. Yeah, 150, 125, 150, something. Yeah, 150. So those are the bombs that I am looking at. But it honestly looks like the way I think I'm going to attack betting this week that I might be left out of that like 60 to in front of 100 range. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, the uh, I'll make my auto Aaron Wise bet. I, I'm pretty sure this is the event that he 
like this was rock bottom for him last year. He lost like 10 strokes putting. He went to the broomstick after this, completely changed everything. He's been a much better putter since. I'm, I'm pretty sure this was rock bottom. Maybe he'll go out there, get some revenge. But yeah, I think I'll probably start, oh boy, 40, maybe 40, 40, 60, 80, and 100, something like that. Five players and kind of. You don't trust that you don't have a, an opinion like of a guy's closer to the top? I think I think I want I think my opinion is JT, but um, yeah. there's just it's there's just a lot there. I mean, I'll like I guess so. I, if I separate, like I'm obviously going to bet on Victor, which I bet him every single week that he plays. But that I don't I don't necessarily count that as like a my card. Yeah, Victor. Also, we didn't really talk about him. I love like so much Hideki or Victor. That could be a decision that I'm going to make maybe when it's time to bet. Vic by a field goal, though. I might have to maybe have them post something there. Yeah. Now we're Time for him to catch another fire wagon. Rick. Hottest guy. Uh, and actually, maybe I started too late. Because, like, Berger at 31, I'm, I'm like, I'm pretty laser focused on Berger at 30. Maybe, maybe a reporter will ask about his back this week and we can get a sense of it. Uh, but I guess as long as he WDs before it starts, I don't really care. Yeah. Well said. Yeah. All right, Jeff Feinberg, available on Twitter at GFeinberg17. You can find me at Rick Run. Good. This has been your odds checker betting preview for this week's WM Phoenix Open. Good luck.